Good morning. Welcome to Building on the Rock Community Church. We are so happy that you are here joining our Sunday online service. Before our service gets started, please take a look at a few announcements we have. Hey guys, welcome to our online service. My name is Pastor Joe. I would like to share a scripture with you. In Hebrews 10.25, it says, Let us not neglect meeting together. That is so important in times like this. To hold these times, this Sunday, sacred for us. But also throughout the rest of the week, we've provided you community groups where you can join together as a group. Uh, there's a group for you, I promise you that. If you go on to our website, you'll be able to see all the different groups that we offer throughout the week. And lastly, we started something last week, but really it started a few weeks ago with the Nash Girls, but we're now doing it as a church-wide thing, is these acts of kindness. They're just a different way in which we get to be someone's neighbor, in which we get to love others. And that's what we're called to do, is to love God and love others. And so we encourage you to do an act of kindness this week. We know God's going to use you in a mighty way. Let me open our service in prayer. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much that no matter what is happening in the world, no matter what crisis is going on, God, that we are still meeting with you. God, that we can still worship you. So God, as we are about to worship you, uh, through these songs, God, may we worship you in spirit and truth. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen.
fell in your feet Tell me how much you love me Thorns on your brow They tell me how You bore so much shame To love me To the heavens Pass away All your scars Will still remain And forever say just how much you love me I wanna say forever my love forever my heart forever my life is yours sing it to him forever my love Forever my heart, forever my life is yours. The nails in your hands, the nail in your feet, they tell me how much you love me. Thorns on your brow. They tell me how you bore so much shame to love until the heavens pass away. All your scars will still remain, and forever they will say. Just how much you love me I wanna say Forever my love Forever my heart Forever my life Is yours Thank you Forever my love Forever my heart Forever my life is yours, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours, my life belongs to you, I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. I'm loved by you Forever my love Forever my heart Forever my life Is yours Forever my love Forever my heart Forever my life Is yours Lord Jesus, I just thank you and praise you for this day, God. I thank you, Lord, that uh, you loved me so much that you chose to bear the punishment that was uh, reserved for me, that I deserved. And you gave your life for me, God, so that um, I wouldn't have to be separated from you forever. God, and forever, forever, I'm going to see the scars on your body and give you praise because I'm where you are. Thank you, Lord. We commit this time to you now in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Good morning, Building on the Rock. Thank you so much for joining us in worship today. As we prepare our hearts for the offering, I want to remind you that this is the week that we collect our kingdom fund. So along with the opportunity for you to give to our general offering, you could also give to our kingdom fund. This is an offering that's above and beyond your general tithe. 
This is an offering that 100% is used to be able to advance the kingdom here, there, and everywhere. So when you give this week, you can go to botrchurch.com, and in the upper right-hand corner, there's a yellow tab that says Give. You can pick what you're giving to, your general offering, your kingdom fund, benevolence fund. There's many choices there for you. You also have the choice to send your check-in directly to the church. Our address is 89 Beckerville Road, Manchester, New Jersey, 08759. Jesus reminds us in Matthew chapter 6, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So the world will tell you that to worry about yourself, make sure that you're happy, make sure you're comfortable. But God's word tells us something different. It says that we are stewards over what he has given us. We are to manage his resources well. And we are called to be a light into this world. We are called to give, to show the love of Christ. Like as Laura said, our kingdom fund this week is going out for us to be able to advance God's kingdom. The question is, what kingdom are you in? Are you in the kingdom of worry and fear? Or are you in God's kingdom knowing that he will be your provider? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for today um, as we take this offering, Lord, that we honor you with all things that we do, Lord, that we um, take this fund and bring it out to the world, God, that those, those that are suffering, those that are in need, those that are hurting, Lord, those that are in worry, would know that there's a God in the universe that loves them. So God, as we, um, we just say thank you for all that you've given us, Lord, and that you are our provider. I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in the My brothers and sisters, believers, and our glorious Lord Jesus Christ must not show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in filthy old clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you stand there, or sit on the floor by my feet, have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? If you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. Wow, what a fitting scripture for where we're at in our series of won't you be my neighbor. You know, when I think we say that, we say that to the world, won't you be my neighbor? Or the world is saying that to us. And we are saying to them, yes, I will, but not to you. Not to you. I will to them, and I will to them, but not to you. I think that's what favoritism could sometimes look like to others. You know, I'll tell you an early form of it. I had a, fa I had a favorite baseball team, and I showed favoritism toward them. I remember being younger and I would look at baseball players as though they were uh, not human. They were gods. And then I realized they are human and they're just normal people. And I don't want to get excited around them when they're just, they're just people. And so, but I started still having this form of favoritism manifest itself in my life. I, I want to give you an example of in my mid-20s. I was looking for a job and I had a temporary job at a local Walmart and I had a friend recommend to me, hey, why don't you stay there and do well and become like a manager there and, and, and then move your way up to more of a corporate type of environment, which I was applying for at the time, a corporate environment in Manhattan at a store called Macy's. And so at this, at this, at this time, I was the gentleman told me to stay at Walmart and become a man, try to become a manager. And I said to him, no, nah, I, I don't want to work at Walmart. And he's like, why not? I'm like, it's a good job. And I said, because, you know, people who aren't successful in life work at a Walmart. It's really bad. It's like a really bad thing to say. And it was a really wrong thing to say. because It's so not true. 
And so he rebuked me. I'm very thankful for that friend. And uh, he told me that's horrible. Don't ever say that again. Never thought I'd be saying it in a message. But then I went to this corporate environment. And my whole idea, I came in as this uh, coordinator level. And I wanted to become a manager. And then I wanted to become a, a, a senior manager. And then I wanted to become a, 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 an executive, a, a vice president. And then I wanted to become... And I just wanted to become the highest person there. And, and I remember like I would go into an elevator with a bunch of coordinators and managers and directors. And I wouldn't get too excited about them being in the elevator. But one time, there was this one time that the chief executive merchandising officer was in the elevator with me. And I um, got uh, really excited about it. And... Uh, and so excited that I introduced myself and stood a little taller and spoke a little louder. And, and I realized at that moment, when I look back on it, I was showing favoritism. I had this, this, treated this person a little differently than I treated everyone else. When God, as brothers and sisters in Christ, as Paul said, as believers in our Lord Jesus Christ... We should not have any favoritism. Not the, that the person who is the most popular, like in Oprah or a whoever you'd like to throw in that column, should be just as important as a Jim Bob or a John Smith or a Sally Sue, whoever you want to say in that column. That people should be looked at as equal and that we should love people equally. I gotta be honest, this can be really hard at times. And I, I'm thinking, I'm hoping that I've gotten past, I'm trying to get past this title thing. I remember I even got a little excited. I remember when uh, our district superintendent came and spoke at our church. And I was a little nervous for that day too, because he was pretty important. Why should I look at people like that? based on how important they are, their status? Or should I see them as people who need to be loved? You know, the one way though that I feel like we can trip up on this the most, the thing that I'm struggling with a lot today, and just going off of where we're at as a church, these acts of kindness that we're kind of starting to do, that a lot of times I want to go out and do these kind things for people. But also this selfish motive is there in the back of my head. Thinking about what will the return on this investment be? What will, if I'm going over to mow my neighbor's lawn, are they ready to hear the gospel? Are they going to come to church? Are they going to listen to my story? So I'm looking and I'm seeing what is the best return on this act of kindness. Whereas the way I think we need to be loving, the way I, I should say not think, the way I know we need to be loving our neighbor is we need to be kind no matter what the ROI is. We just need to be kind. We just need to love. We just need to care. You know, I sent out an email earlier this week. I hope you watched it. It was a testimony of another Alliance Church uh, in Nebraska. And this, this one gentleman and his family, they had a flood and it flooded their home and it destroyed their home and they couldn't live in their home no more and the pastor of the church was so moved that he went over to the man and he started really reflecting upon this loving my neighbor statement that Jesus makes in the scriptures and he started realizing that loving my neighbor must come unconditionally and he told the man that he was going to build them a house. 
that the church was going to build them a house. And that the one thing that he wanted the man to know is that this is not based on conditions. You don't have to come to the church. You don't have to receive the gospel. You don't have to become a believer. You don't have to, you don't have to do that. We just want to love you unconditionally. You know, being people, being people of this evil flesh, I feel like we can put a lot of conditions on our love. We can love people if they do this. Or we love people and then we expect them to love us back. Whereas God is saying to love unconditionally. And not pick our favorite ones to love. Not pick the ones that we want to love. But just love. Love our neighbor. I'm going to read to you a scripture that should remind us of what this love should look like. It's in John chapter 15 verse 12. Jesus said this, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Jesus loved us in a sacrificial way, a on the cross type of way, a way that was a big, big love, an agape love, an unconditional love. This is how we should love not picking who, but just going and loving others. Guys, as you go about your week, do it. Do it the way Jesus did it. Do those acts of kindness. Don't do it for the people that you want to do it. Listen to God. And he'll direct you. And just go love. Love others as he has loved us. Let me pray. Lord Jesus, we recognize that's, that, that showing favoritism is an evidence of sin in our life. God, we do not want to people be a people that show favoritism. We want to be a people that love unconditionally, that love like you loved, with an agape love, an unconditional love. God, I pray that in these times that we would be commended, that people would recognize this unconditional love that we're giving out. These as what we're calling acts of kindness. So Lord, I just pray for the people of Building the Rock. I pray that wherever they're at, they would be a blessing. That whoever's in their phone book, God, that they would be a blessing to those people. Whatever interactions they have on social media, God, that they would be a blessing to those people. That God, that they would love, that people would feel their love. We thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for us and showing us how to live out this command. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. God bless you, Building on the Rock. Thank you again for tuning in with us this week.